a good amount of stuff just in switchers so that way we can all know um, what's what. So first off, I'm going to start with the different types of switchers. Um, so there's basically three different types of switchers. There is a router, which is basically um, similar to like if you were to unplug an SDI cable and plug it into another spot. Uh, it has more uh, relationship that way. There's also a seamless switcher, um, which is uh, like the ones that you find in classrooms and that kind of stuff that allow you to switch inputs, but you can have like different resolutions, you can have different um, uh, uh, signal, types. signal types and all that kind of stuff. So and it allows you to, instead of uh, changing the input on the TV or the projector, it allows you to change it at the switcher. So, and then there's a broadcast switcher, which is like these guys. And that allows you to sync all of your video sources up so that way they can um, uh, do mix effects and that kind of stuff between the two different signal sources and stuff. So, um, some of the things uh, to think about when you're thinking about um, uh, switchers is your inputs and sources. Uh, so, there's a couple different uh, things there's SDI, um, which is a, a kind of like a coax cable, um, and you plug. Uh, use that to be able to do cameras. That's what we use for a lot of our cameras here. It's kind of a broadcast, mm -hmm. generally a standard in broadcast. Yeah. And then there's more consumer grade stuff like HDMI and uh, DVI. So, mm -hmm. um, and the trick is when you have all those different signal types, uh, syncing those all together and keeping the latency low. So, um, one thing with Genlock and uh, uh, two different kinds of tri level sync, which is like an HD. Um, Genlock protocol, and then there's Blackverse, which is like an older uh, SD um, sync protocol. So if you look at the, the lyrics uh, screen right there, you can see how it's slipping. That means that it's not uh, getting uh, synced up with all of the other video sources, so it's slipping. Um, and when we uh, apply Genlock, it'll then sync it together and keep it all uh, locked in. So. Um, Delay happens when you have uh, conversion. Um, it depends on your switcher type too. So every time you kind of jump through a hoop to get through the video signal chain, so you start with your camera, and then you go into potentially a converter to go from like HDMI to SDI, and then you go into the switcher, and then you go into a distribution amplifier, or you go into a projector. Each step and those can potentially introduce latency and the more latency that you have the more uh, the audience will notice that the video is a little bit laggier behind and stuff like that so one of the reasons why we use genlock here is because if you genlock them all at the source then there's less latency down the chain because you're not having to apply uh, frame syncs which is uh, what the switcher can do if your camera doesn't have a camera source doesn't have uh, genlock capabilities, you can apply a frame sync, which then syncs it. That adds a frame of delay. And we actually have, a, it's a little box called the Grass Valley, and that introduces 2.5 frames of delay, which at 60 frames per second, that's going to be... Um, 30 milliseconds? Yeah. 50, yep. 50 milliseconds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think whatever that math is. Yeah. So there's 60 frames per second. If you add two frames, that's how many milliseconds it would be. So um, you want to try to keep that down. So that's why we use Genlock here. Um, well, you can usually get away with frame syncs and that kind of stuff. That's what we do in all of our other venues. Um, with this switcher, this has frame syncs on every single input. Um, our switcher here has six frame syncs for all of our things. Um, and these guys have frame six on them too, so just depends on which switcher you're working with. So we go from there. We go to the switcher itself. Um, the switchers are usually categorized in how many uh, MEs or mix effects. It's also referred to as MLE, um, and that's yep. And that's how um, they're usually categorized. So, for instance, this is uh, kind of a one ME. This is a one ME. Um, Actually, all these three are one ME. This is going to be a two ME, but with the software, they allowed it to add four additional software MEs. Um, that's kind of the difference between these two as well, that this is a, a software switcher, 
and this is a hardware switcher, hardware tends to have less latency because you're doing it mechanically more so than you are um, using computer to do all the processing. So um, this guy has four mix effects or MEs um, and they're all combined or all done by cross points is what it's called. So a cross point is this kind of layer here where you have your program, which is what's live, and your preview, which is on deck. Um, and so there's four of those banks of uh, Emmys, as it were, um, in this switcher. Uh, and the other uh, kind of areas are gonna be your mix effects, which is gonna be like your transition, that's gonna be your dissolve and your cut, or your star wipes or anything like that. Uh, and then the next thing is going to be your keyers, which at, is added on top of uh, your cross point uh, switching. So um, we use that for adding lower thirds, uh, text over video, and that kind of stuff. So if Casey turns that on. Oh, there you go. So yeah, you see, see how that's going over the top of the video source there. There's a full screen graphic, so that's why you're, it's actually laying over the top of the video on MLA1 there. Mm -hmm. See that? Okay, so that's that. Yep, and so that's a keyer effect, and there's different types of keyers. There is a um, chroma key, which uh, is kind of like a green screen. That's like your weatherman standing in front of a screen that is pointing at stuff that's not there, and they add that other stuff with that key. Um, and then there is... A DVE, which is if you look at MLE one right now, you can kind of see this is what's called a DVE. A DVE um, is like a picture in picture. So I have the ability to resize another source and move it around to lay it over the top of your source. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then there's also alpha key, which is what we use um, because it's a cleaner uh, key because you're basically telling the switcher what to cut out. And so there is a key and a fill layer. So there's two SDIs feeding into the switcher. Uh, your fill layer has your content and your key layer has your, um, it's telling what the switcher what to cut out. So, um, kind of like a cookie cutter, basically you just yeah. frame around anything that's, that has, it's basically layers of transparency. So you send sort of a transparent background and then anything that isn't transparent is your foreground. And that's what it uses to lay overlay is what's in the foreground basically. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is a linear key that basically uses, uh, your lumen um, or luminosity, luminosity, yep, mm -hmm. uh, to cut out. So if it's white, it's good. If it's black, it's being cut out. So it uses that black and white. Um, and if you're using any kind of like gradient, like grays and stuff like that, it's, it can be a little bit noisier and stuff like that. Um, but it can uh, kind of take that into account as well. It sort of gives you a semi transparency. Like if you're doing a shadow or something yeah. like that, yeah. So. From there, so we've gone through the cross point, which is basically how you're, what you're telling the switcher to um, put into the, your program feed. Um, and then it goes to the transition area. You're tw transitioning back and forth between your two different sources. Um, and then you're keying on top of that. And then all of that goes to an output. So um, you have a couple different outputs. You have your, um, you can output direct directly your uh, uh, your different ME's, so your ME1, ME2, and then on this one in particular, we have our uh, mini me's, which are all, uh, we can get at all of those um, from our switcher's outputs. So we can send each of those outputs to different things and be able to process um, those sources. Okay. So um, another term that we use instead of ME, they'd be like processed outputs. So they're the ones that we could allow or put transitions on um, uh, and cuts and all that kind of stuff versus just uh, a hard cut. So like going from a source to a source without you, any dissolve or anything. So. And then some switchers in this one included has the ability to um, do what's called a clean feed. So you can send your uh, program output output without any downstream keys that you mm -hmm. have on. So like here, I apply this key. So right now you see the um, the lyrics output or the lyric source is laying over the top of the output. If I had a clean feed, I would actually then be able to see the video source underneath that. 
So and you can actually set it to be uh, downstream any four of these keys. So I could have I have I can layer up to four keys uh, at one time for any mix layer effect, any ME, mm -hmm. and then the mini me's have the ability to do two layered keys. Yeah. So. Um, another source that we can get at uh, as an output is uh, preview. So if you wanted to have like a separate monitor to be able to preview that. So if you have some kind of heads up for any kind of like announcer or something like that, they could kind of see what's on deck or something like that. If your video director wants to look at that. Um, your aux feeds are basically um, outputs from your switcher that you can then um, change what's assigned to it via the switcher itself. So you could statically route an input source to that out aux feed or you could route any of those process outputs mm -hmm. any of your mixed layer effects your preview outputs um, any of those things basically yeah so it just and this one in particular has eight outputs those are eaten up um, by we're actually assigning our me's to those along with our mini me's so that only allows us uh, I think it's three or two, two additional aux two additional aux outputs, which can be mm -hmm. hard cuts um, between two different sources, um, but you're not able to use transitions and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, the other things that we can get out, like Casey said, is the clean feed and then the multi viewer. So these two screens are actually fed by our um, switcher, and those are all assigned via our software over here via dashboard. Um, so you can basically put any video up anywhere you want on the screen. So. Yeah, these layouts are configurable as well as the, so you can configure it to be, like this one is configured just to be four boxes. You could have it be the exact same layout as here and then have different cameras. Yeah, they're very configurable from the software. You can just kind of put any inputs and outputs you want. Basically. Mm -hmm. So um, there is some differences with this switcher compared to these switchers where our switcher here is a router and a switcher and one. Um, and so what that means is that we can have 144 connected sources into our our um, our carbonite extreme. So that um, so kind of the first step in the door is the router. That router then uh, it can route into the switcher. So it'd be basically if you were to take like an SDI cable and patch it in to the back of here is kind of what the router is doing. You're basically telling. Um, with the router, you're assigning sources into the switcher. So we can set um, out of those 144 uh, SDI inputs on our uh, box back here, we can assign uh, 24 inputs into the switcher. It can only take 24. So, um, and then it's eight outputs from here. And then you can take those eight outputs and go to any of those 144 yeah. outputs. The other thing that a router can do is take an any, even if you're not using, uh, so you have 144 inputs and you have up to 144 outputs on that router. Even if you're not sending those inputs into this switcher, you could still then statically route any of those 144 inputs to any mm -hmm. of the 144 outputs too. It just wouldn't be a process or a, it wouldn't be routed through the actual switcher engine. Yep. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty flexible, really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. So. So, and before we dive much deeper into that, um, I'll explain these real quick. So these are what we have kind of around the building for the most part, um, particularly this, this one right here. So this one is in the box, the gym, the South Auditorium. Um, this is kind of our go-to switcher for the, all those venues. Uh, and the great thing is that on the front of it, it has these three buttons right here, our aux outputs. So basically, on if you push this button here, it'll light up saying, hey, this is the one that you selected. What do you want to send to it? And you can select any of these buttons here to send to it. So That's you can select either. your Rather sources than. one through 10, or you can select colors, uh, or you can even load an image into it if you wanted to. Um, clean feeds, program, preview, all that kind of stuff can be assigned to that. So you can assign any of these to any of these three outputs, um, which is great because then that allows us to like in the box, we can assign one to the projector so you can statically route the uh, CG computer to the projector, and output two you can statically assign to the, like the TV that's out there, and then third you can uh, send that to the hyperdex that we have in there uh, right. for recording and that kind of stuff. And with the recording, you can either statically assign a camera, or you can send the program output to that. So <clears throat> this uh, top one is an older version of the Atom Television Studio. You can see how it has 
four HDMI inputs. It has uh, uh, duplicated three and four, and then it has two SDI uh, inputs over here. So, and then it has your multi viewer out, your program out um, in two different spots, uh, a multi viewer output, and then you can actually control all of that um, via the software interface, like I have set up over here. So you can kind of see the different buttons, how that mimics this uh, control surface here. Um, and you can actually then, there's an audio page uh, there as well, where you can kind of see um, uh, all the different audio sources and you can route and mix um, the audio that way So too. yeah, one thing you didn't mention back when you were talking about source types, HDMI and SDI, in addition to carrying video over those cables, they also carry what's called embedded audio. Mm -hmm. So HDMI and I think SDI can both, well, HDMI can think of carry eight channels of embedded audio and yeah. SDI can do up to 16, 16. if you're doing yeah. uh, 12G, so mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and these guys, the Blackmagic guys in particular can only do two channels, so it'll only take the first two channels, but like but if, if you're, you're doing recording and things yeah. like that, then you can mix down larger amounts of um, uh, audio, and yep. you can you can get at that. You also have what's called audio embedders and de-embedders too, so um, you can take your video source into it, and then also take audio via other sources like AES or analog audio, and then embed that together with the video signal, mm -hmm. and then later downstream you might want to get at that audio to like put it into a mixer or something like that, then you have a de-embedder device where you put the video signal in and then you maybe get video signal out without audio and then all your audio out via any of those other protocols too. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Um, this is actually what we're going to be sending with all of our church, well, hope to send with our church plants because this is a really great setup for them. So this is a switcher and a quarter all-in-one rack unit space. So you can kind of see how this mimics the a switcher where you can you know, select your previewed source, and that's green. You can uh, uh, auto transition or cut transition here. You can actually um, turn on and off the audio sources on those channels. So if you wanted to get audio from there, um, you can actually assign, it has one aux output. So with that, you can then route to that aux any of these eight inputs, um, either be the program feed or these cameras. Um, and it has yeah the nice screen and stuff like that. So you can then route the program feed into this HyperDeck uh, for recording. And you can kind of see how Casey's uh, recording that all via the software, which you can do with a computer or an iPad or anything like that. So, yeah. so I can a, also then transition things as well mm -hmm. from the computer here, as you can see. Yep, so great little box. That's what we're going to be sending with them. So in particular, this bottom one is uh, that... Um, what did I call it? More of a classroom. The type. seamless switcher. Yeah, yeah that's the class, uh, classroom one. So it gives you the ability to switch different inputs, but it doesn't work well in our type of environment. So in particular, there was a case where Iowa City had more of, of this kind of, or not Iowa City, Cedar Falls had this kind of switcher. They were asking me how they could put a camera in there and switch back and forth for like baptism and that kind of stuff. And it was going to be a lot harder to work with because of you that. You don't have so. the smooth transition ability or the mixing uh, effects layer type stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really just more, it really more functions almost like a router where you're just taking an input and assigning it to an output. Yeah. Punching or swapping them. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, that's why we kind of stick with the, the broadcast type switcher. So, um, so yeah, now... We're going to actually dive in deeper, and hopefully this will be helpful for you to dive in more to like our the actual nitty gritty of our board versus the over, kind of the overview. So we have a lot of stuff over here that we don't use. So there's the self key, which um, is that luminosity key, or I, I think it even, I don't know, I can't remember if it actually tells because yeah. uh, there's a chroma key button here. So I think the self key is a lum luminosity key. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then there's these other buttons that are blank, which I'm assuming that they're going to add functionality later. So yeah, this, 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 just a quick overview. This is sort of broken up into sections, like Zach said. So these are sort of key controls here, selecting your keys, mm -hmm. your aux outputs, and, and things like that. So it's, it's, it's very kind of modular or chunks. So I'll just kind of work through each one. So, yeah. so uh, key control. So this controls the keys. This selects which source you want to use for your key, for each of the four keys. So you would select your key here. So if I wanted to assign key one to a source, I hit this. And then up here you see this says key aux custom control. 
So this is actually, this row is actually where I select which source that key is assigned to. Um, Let's set up the lyrics key since it doesn't seem. So key uh, four is the, okay, so. Uh, you're in the um, mini me, so we need to go to the. Oh yeah, so. There we go. one. So now I'm gonna, uh, okay, so. Um, just a quick overview. Ah, on, on the way we have this set up, we have, uh, again, we have two MLEs or mixed layer effects. Um, we have ML, mixed layer effect one and two. So mixed layer effect one is what we are using as our pro process program output. Um, so that's assigned to aux seven here and you can control that via the computer. So if I select this, then that gives me, uh, that gives me control of all of the, all of the aspects of that mixed layer effect. Um, and that includes keying, custom controls, which we'll talk about, and then all of your mix mix controls to cut and dissolve and things like that. So um, in this case, we use key four to uh, as a um, alpha key. And so we use that in general during our worship services for lower third lyrics and then other graphics and things like that. So again, to set that up, if you ever come in and it's not working, you're going to go key, key four select here. So that tells you that you're going to assign the, the input source uh, to use for that key. And then you're just going to come up here and you're going to see this lyrics input here. And that's that's what you're going to hit. So now it's assigned here. Um, and then what we have to do is go into be here to tell it that, uh, or I think it actually, actually already is. Yeah, I think it's already pretty much. So that input, we basically tell it that uh, it actually has kind of this, uh, it, we assign it the alpha layer as well within the switcher. Yeah, so okay. you, so you actually configure on the that in, the, in layer, like it's kind of buried in the configurations, but it's under, I think. The input. Yeah, I think you're right. It's under input. And then you would say, yep. so you can see if we scroll on, you, you can't see this, but if I scroll to that input source, um, which is input 24 here. Um, you see here, it has a second input called lyrics alpha that's um, assigned. So it knows basically to take those two, those two layers and combine them together to get your, your yep. key and your fill. So you don't, um, yeah, you don't have to assign that anywhere else. It's automatically added to that uh, input, so. Exactly. Um, so and that does require some special hardware to be able to do that type of uh, key fill output. So in that ca in this case, we use an Ultra Studio 4K uh, with ProPresenter to do that. Alpha. there's other software and other options to do that, but mm -hmm. um, that's just the particular one that we use. So. Yeah, because what is this? I'm trying to remember what this mimic, Aux 1, Aux 2. I'm not sure. I remember that there was something with aux one and two are eaten up if you use one a multi viewer. So multi viewer takes one of your aux outputs. Um, uh, so if you push and hold this, you have the ability to assign. I think somehow, but up here you can maybe. But yep. Yeah. So so again, we use we typically keep it so the aux seven is on the bottom here and aux8 is on the top here. And this top row is what we use for our side screens because throughout the service, sometimes we'll uh, go in and out of what's called IMAG or image magnification. So we're showing a camera source on the side screens, but we don't always want to do that. Um, so we have that as our second process mm -hmm. output. So. Yep. Yeah, so it's set up kind of maybe a little bit different. So um, usually you're, uh, uh, ME1 um, would be on this top row and ME2 would be on the second row. But because we, we feed our like IMAG and any kind of like, uh, um, if we transition cameras on our, our side screens and that kind of stuff, we're mixing, we're sending that ME into uh, ME2. So the side screens are fr coming from ME2. Our center screen is coming f from uh, mini me one. Um, and so that's kind of how it, it works. So uh, the one processed uh, of uh, ME, ME1 is feeding into two. Mm -hmm. So that way you can then mix your cameras and everything like that. So, um, and you can actually then assign, uh, so this one uh, ME can actually be assigned 
into any of those other ones, the mini me's or mm -hmm. MA2. So yes. you can control them all if you wanted to that way. So catch yeah. them all. Yeah. Um, can you send uh, mm -hmm. an only two into a mini me too? Interesting. Yeah, I think Maybe. so. Okay. Um, Interesting. Have to, I don't know if you can actually do a feedback loop or not, but um, <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, another thing that we that we use um, so this uh, at some point will be relabeled uh, maybe um, instead of being aux one through eight uh, or we'll do a better job labeling this so that way it's easy to understand but um, you can see here how aux three through six is many me's one through four and then uh, me one which is this bottom row is coming out of aux seven and then uh, ME2 is coming out of aux8. And that's, so if you ever see that, oh, these are the same, you know, the things and when I switch, that's actually um, changing both rows. You can kind of, you have to look at this and see which uh, cross point or mini me you're actually working with. Yep. So, um, and the next thing, which hopefully this will be super helpful is understanding how to find the macros. So the macros are, are uh, a way that we can record different steps in a process. So if you say, you know, camera one to program, and then camera uh, on ME2, I wanna send camera three to uh, the projectors. Um, you can basically record a bunch of different steps uh, all in one button, button press which then makes uh, it more automated, easier to use and that kind of stuff. So you don't have human failure with, oh, I accidentally fat fingered this or I didn't quite get this quite right. So we've st been starting to use that a lot more. And that's been super helpful to be able to um, make sure that all the cameras and all the sources get to the right places. So basically, yeah, all you do is you just basically hit this record button and then you just do the sequence of button presses that you would normally do throughout a service or or for one process like the start of the service or going in and out of iMag or something like that. So you just record those, push all the buttons, and then stop, and then um, and then that's recorded. So then you can just basically push that button to replicate that over and over again. Um, it also has the ability to put like time delays and um, pauses. So So we have one that we recorded to kind of start our service off. So if I go here in the bank one, and then I push this button, you'll see it's it it does some things, it like does some routing, but now it's basically just sitting and waiting, and it's gonna hold and wait to complete the rest of that process until I push that button again. Um, and that's really useful for us, like at the beginning of our service, because we have kind of this flip um, that we do right at the beginning of the service um, that was pretty complicated and a lot of button presses, so. Mm -hmm. um, basically yeah, it's really just it out, kind of a ways, ways to automate things. Um, one thing to remember is that you do have to record those live, so you don't want to be recording those while you're actually in a service or something because people will actually see all of those things that are happening. So um, plan ahead and pre-program those and make sure they work before you start your service if you're going to be adding any of those. Mm -hmm. So. So um, currently we use, um, like Casey has said, he built this one for us. So this is for our, our pre-roll, um, if it's flashing. Uh, if we press it again, then that's taking uh, graphics, uh, our graphics computer, which has is our main computer to all the three different screens. And that's what we have lyrics, the white on black in the center of the screen is sent um, that way. So from there, we then uh, go to this uh, next macro, which then statically assigns um, camera three to uh, the side screens and then allows us to then mix cameras down here on e ME uh, one mm -hmm. um, for broadcast and stuff like that. And then um, this next macro then takes us out of that. So we basically select uh, in this preview what camera uh, we want to go to next and then press that macro and then that takes us there. Uh, these other macros that we have here, we have one for baptism that then is, um, uh, yeah, so what, what that'll do is that'll take, uh, whatever camera we have assigned to our baptism camera, it will, um, dissolve it on both of these two rows because so if you remember this is this, uh, 
this output is assigned to our side screens, right? So um, what it'll do is it'll preview that baptism camera on this output. It'll preview it here, and it will also preview it. Or if you remember, Aux three was our um, was our center screen. Center screen. So what it'll do then also is make the center screen follow the side screen. So you can see here it uh, previewed and then dissolved to MLE one. Um, no, they, they follow the program feed. Program feed, sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah. so it, it follows yep. MLE so, on our program feed. So, so it, that macro takes the, whatever you have selected on all of our, on our main program feed to the bottom row, yeah. and sends that to the, both center screen and the side screens. That way we have yeah. the baptism camera, or like this coming weekend, like we actually have, we'll have two bap baptism cameras. And so that way we, the side screens, in the center screen, follow whatever we're sending to like our, the lobby TVs and the recording and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, that way, when we like, well, most of the time we'll be on like our main front camera that just shows the people, but then we'll have like a side kind of overview of mm -hmm. of Everybody the foyer and the baptismal. And if we switch to that, that'll go live on all the screens mm -hmm. in here in the auditorium as well. Yeah, and one of the reasons why we're adding that was that we actually have forty four baptisms this weekend. Holy crap! So we're pretty excited. It's going to be that. a. Uh, a long baptism ago. I think they're going to be sharing their testimonies and that kind of stuff too. So we wanted to add a, another camera to give us a different shot to be able to get some respite from be really um, getting such a close shot. So um, why don't you actually record that, Casey, since we're not actually statically routing that camera? And I don't know if that, are we uh, routing this ME into all uh, uh, ME2 and 2. That's that's what it looks like, but, but you also notice it took camera 7, which is, may not be where we put our baptism camera. So really, all we probably want to do is tell... Um, we probably... what I'm going to kind of talk through what, I think, what I'm thinking here. So I'm thinking what we'll want to do, because we're going to be switching multiple cameras here, we'll want to we'll um, choose what you're going to preview here. So you're going to choose which of the two cameras for baptism you want to go to. I'll, I'll transition this program row. At the same time, I'll also transition this top row here, which is our side screens, to MLE1 as its source, so it will follow this. And then I will also then, at the same time, also take our center screen, and I'll, um, so that's I'll also have that mini-me also follow our program output. Mm -hmm. Which it looks like it did most of those things, but I'm not sure, so... Um, in this case, we'll just go ahead and delete that, and we can we can record it so you guys mm -hmm. can kind of see how you record a uh, a, um, a mini or a, a macro or a custom control. So mm -hmm. in this case, I'm going to take this Emily, and I'm just going to delete um, delete everything that's in there. So now that's gone. So once again, I'll kind of walk you through um, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to I'm going to choose here seven. I'm going to start recording. And um, then it tells you that it's flashing so that you can see which one it's recording into. And so as I push buttons, it's just going to put those things into the recording queue. So first step I'm going to do is I'm just going to straight dissolve this row. Um, so the person that's operating will then, they'll know they need to preview the source they want to see first. So auto transition here. Um, and then on, I'm going to go ahead and select mini me one and I'm going to preview MLE one is my source, which is again, so previewing this source here, and then I'm going to auto transition that, and then I'm going to choose MLE two here, um, which is the side screens, and I'm going to preview MLE one and dissolve it. And then what I'm probably going to do then is put a hold. So up here you can see it says insert hold. So that hold is where it just blinks and waits for you uh, until you're done. So I'll put that in, so that's hold inserted. And then, so after we're done with baptisms, um, do you know in this particular service if we're going straight- We're going out straight of, into the message. Out of, okay, believe, so, so. so in that case, if we're going straight into the message, then I'll probably want to preview camera three next um, after the hold. So after baptisms are done, they've prayed, and then we're going straight into the message. So we'll preview camera three. I'll dissolve the side screens to camera three, MLE one, the center screen. I'll go back and I'll assign it to graphics. Um, so here. And then down here, I'll just also auto transition. So then they'll know 
to preview whichever camera they want to go to. Um, and then now I'm done recording, so I can stop recording. And then um, once you select a button here, you can use this knob to, to scroll through and see all the steps that you just recorded. And you can actually go back and edit individual um, steps. Individual steps. So I, if I click to edit, I can insert things. I can delete individual steps in that in that process. So um, you can always sort of just review that. So mm -hmm. and you can actually uh, do all this kind of stuff from dashboard as well. So you can look at a, a better display of all those steps. Yeah, I would say this is probably the easiest way to record a yep. record a, a custom controller totally. or a macro. And then, and then it's sometimes easier to edit it there or take a look at it and review mm -hmm. what you're doing. So, um, yep. yeah, so that should work. Um, what we'll probably end up needing to do then is just waiting until we get both of those cameras plugged in in the lobby. And then on Sunday morning, what we'll do is I'll, I'll just come in and I'll review this and, and we go through it a couple of you times. You can test with other cameras too right now. I can. You're right. Yeah. So I could... So. I could pretend that camera one was a baptism camera and camera two was a baptism camera. Um, but let's reset this back to what it normally would be. So center screen should be assigned to graphics. Side screen should be on graphics. Um, I guess yeah, I could just do, I could just do this to, um, so if you are if you're in bank one, you can't actually run the run the custom controls directly. You have to hit run event here. Otherwise, just select a different menu area and then you can run the custom controls. So I usually just hit this dissolve button so that that it, it's basically um, these buttons and these knobs are contextual to whatever menu you're in. So uh, the way you know that you have a menu up is the the key turn the button and turns green here so in this case dissolve is green so what i then have up here is all of the controls related to my dissolve so you can see here i can adjust the number of frames uh that dissolve takes i can uh control some other things like whether it rolls a clip at the same time or what dissolve type it is there's different types like flash or dissolve and that sort of stuff um Otherwise, you can also just hit this menu button here. Then that gives you kind of the main overview menu mm -hmm. of the whole switcher. But um, So say again why this wasn't working before. So if I have bank one selected here, so that means I'm in my custom control menu. Mm -hmm. um, you can see it says that up there. These won't... Um, these custom controls won't won't run if I'm in edit mode, basically. Oh, edit mode, yeah. Yeah, yep. So I was edit there is why. I gotcha. So, um, yeah. So, yep. Because it's still in edit mode right now, right? Yes. Now it's not. Yeah. A little flashing button is kind of nice. <laughs> okay, so now let's say, um, so I'm ready to go into baptisms. I'm gonna treat camera one and two as my baptism cameras. In this case, they're not really that right now, but I'm, I'm ready to go into, so I wanna take camera one basically everywhere is what the goal is, right? So and have the ability then to switch to camera two if I want to. So I did my my custom control here. So once I hit this, we should see camera one dissolve there. Um, we don't have our screens on, so it's well, hard to see. We could assign it to, to the tell. I'm going to come over here with my um, on my multi viewer. I'm going to send the side screens up here to here, which is mini me one. Uh, two side screens. Side screens, is, or sorry, side screens is up there. It's on. Side um, screens is that Molly too? So I'm gonna. That's that's the center screen there, and then I'm gonna do. Uh, here, sorry. Oh my God. Label. And here, we'll do our MLE two. Yeah, and this board in particular uses the term MLE. So, okay. uh, MLE one, MLE two, and mini me's are the different processed outputs. Okay, so for some reason the key was on here. I think it might have just got stuck in limbo because I didn't run control three. But um, we'll test that in here. So now, right now, you see center M M M M one, which is Mini Me one, is uh, camera one right now. It's MLE two is camera one, and so is my MLE one. So now, if I preview this and transition it, you notice that it switched the center screen, the MLE two, and the MLE one all at the same we time. Camera two. It's should be transitioning. Well, if I transition it. Oh. So, see, yeah. yeah. 
So you can see that it's it's taking all three of those to the same source at the same time because it's they're all following MLE1. So now let's see what happens when I go out of that because it's it's on pause here. So going out of that, I should see camera, I wanna go to camera three on my program and I wanna take camera three to the side screens and I wanna see the center screen go to my graphics input. So let's see if that happens or not. Okay, so that looks like it took camera three to the side screens here. Um, it looks like took graphics to the center screen. Graphics to the center screen, and it looks like I have camera three on my program. Two other things that we uh, one other step actually. This is perfect because now I can go back and edit. One other step that I forgot is at the top of at the beginning of our message, we actually do overlay a short little video clip that uh, identifies the person. We call it a tag. So we, we kind of display their name and their title real quick. And in order to do that, I have to have the key for uh, our lyric source on, on the side screens and the program. Um, but it's really easy to forget to put that key on on the top row here. So actually, let's go ahead and go into that macro and edit and turn on this key here. Um, hey, Casey, if, say that we had, like we leave the key on for the whole service uh -huh. generally. So if you do a macro and the key is still on, will it stay on? It will mm -hmm. unless I, I can actually, there's actually a control, off. there's actually okay. key functions mm -hmm. in, in the macros that you can do, you can do three different things. You can toggle the key, you can explicitly turn the key on or explicitly turn the key okay. off in a macro. You have that, that control. So actually in that, in the, in like, like in this one, I explicitly turn it off okay. on the side screens because you know how. Right. With the pre-roll and everything. Right. So the, the lyrics goes to the center and side screens gets <laughs> graphics, but I don't want the lyrics overlaid over the right. top of graphics. So I turn the key off explicitly okay. in this macro. And then we turn it. And then I, and we, you turn it back on at the top of the service. At the service. Yeah. And then so you just I leave it on all the way through like, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking with what you were getting ready to record, like, well, if we have the key on, do you need to incorporate the key into this method? Yes. Right. So and and I do. I don't need yeah. to do it down here. I right. actually need to do it up here oh, on the top row on okay. the on the side screens okay. because that's not that's no longer following the yeah. center screen. It's okay. its own camera source. Got it. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back into this bank one. I'm going to select this here. I'm going to oops, I ran it. So I'm going to hit edit here. And now I can go and select this one here and I can hit edit. I can scroll all the way to the end here. I can hit insert. And what I'm going to insert is, uh, you can just hit the button, right? I don't want to hit the button because I want to do an explicit, uh, um, key control. And I don't remember how I do that. You need, you need to draw this row. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and actually hit, key auto transition here and then I think I can stop recording and then if I go here I think I can so mini me one auto I think I can actually change that to where is that actually actually hang on oh here it is okay so yeah so you just scroll through this knob here options and you'll notice I see cut key, cut key, ME2 in this case. MLA2. Okay, so cut key, ME2, K4 for key, turn key, ME2, K4, which is key four, and I can put it in on or off state. So I'm gonna put it in the on state and that's what I'm gonna insert. So insert that. And you notice the key went on there. And that should be it. Because so so a normal service, like Zach said, we would go, this would be the start of the service here. So I would run, I would hit this to go into my into my pre-service loop. So that's when we have a video file looping on our side screens coming from our graphics source and a static graphic from our lyric source on the center screen. Mm -hmm. And then um, we start the service off with a, a short little welcome video that's two minutes long. And so during that video, I would push this button to send that graphic source to all three screens. Then typically I would go this button here to take camera three to the side screens and key on for the lyrics. Um, and then coming out of that, I would push this one. Um, 
But since we're doing something different, we're, gonna, we're doing baptisms of four, so I'll do this, but I can still then go out of, uh, out of message the with. message with this one here. So that should work just fine. So let's, let's, let's confirm that again. So let's say um, right now, as you can see, our center and our side, our center M, M1, which is mini V1, is graphics. MLA2 is graphics. And we have our program feed that I can cut my camera. So that's what I'm doing during worship. Um, I would normally have the key on here, but as you can see, there's a full screen graphic. Um, normally there would be a, uh, no full screen graphic, just lower third lyrics there. Um, so then going to baptisms, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this to take camera one to, um, camera one to all three sources and switch back and forth between camera one and two. And then after that, they're going to pray. And so we'll then, uh, after they say, amen, we're going to basically come up into iMag on the, um, on the side screens and center screen will be graphics and our program will be our camera that we take. So, um, let's see how that works. So we saw center screen switch to, um, the camera with uh, oh, why didn't the center screen switch? It's right. It just has the lyrics over top. Oh, did it not play that macro though? No, the center screen didn't switch though. Yeah, what uh, happened there? Hang on. Oh, it's like it only went and went. Okay, hang on here. Okay. So let's let's go back and look at our, our macro again here real quick. So bank one here. So that's doing everything there fine. But the center screen didn't didn't dissolve back. So let's see if we um, so we have Uh-huh. So what I did, okay, so I, I noticed I did mini me preview graphics, but I didn't dissolve graphics. So let's insert here and we'll do an auto transition. And stop recording. And now, I should do it, I think. Yep, there we go. Cool. So that was it. Um. Okay. So, so a, you can see record, recording macros is sometimes a troubleshooting and I, I like, oh, I think I got it. But then you have to make sure you test it and go over it mm -hmm. several times and just think through. It, it's very much a like process, like Zach said, it's very process driven. So just think through exactly what you want the thing to do. Try it. If you don't get there, you can go back and edit it like we did a couple of times. So, mm -hmm. um, And yeah. real quick uh, and lastly, um, how to assign inputs to the uh, cross points. So first off, you have to route it into the switcher uh, via dashboard over there, and then that allows you to then assign it over here. You can't actually do this assignment uh, to these buttons over there, from what I understand. So you might be able to, but it's it's. it's I yet. think it's easier to do it here. So the easiest way to do it is you go menu here, then you're going to go on here. You hit menu. Then here you see this config button. And so config is configuring the switcher. Mm -hmm. In this case, you have what's called a bus map. And that bus map is where you do your cross points. So you see XPT button one, so that's cross point button one. And then you here. scroll through this knob here to choose which source you want to assign to that. And, and it goes one through 24. Um, you may not see the numbers one through 24 because it's, it's dependent on how you label it on the dashboard software but you basically just kind of scroll through which of the sources you want. In addition to the 24 inputs, you also have a black button, mm -hmm. just as a courtesy for in case you need to go to that. Um, you can also then do other things like stage display, um, or sorry, no, those, those are inputs actually. So, sorry, you can, you can do your multi-viewers actually as mm -hmm. um, bus maps, but yep. Um, and then the other thing I think is you can, those, uh, 
I think you can assign like photo or like uh, pictures or whatnot. In there oh yeah, so it also has a media. It has a built-in media player that you can upload static graphics and short little roll clips, like they call them, mm. into there too. Like stinger clips. Yeah. Yep. So. So, if you wanted to start doing broadcast basketball or something. Yep. So does every M- uh, MLE use the same twenty-four crosspoint? Mm-hmm. Correct. Yes. Yep. That is correct. So, yeah, it's just this mirrored five times. Because one, and then six. the. Or mirrored five times, yeah. So you have this plus replicated across all six yeah. of your mini processed and pro- your processed your mini me's and your two Emily's. Yep. Yep. So.